Ross. Welcome back. This is now episode four in Back to the Basics here. Um, as you can see, I've marked off uh, the topics we've already talked about here, which we talked about in the first video, which was philosophy and personnel. Then we moved on to formations in the second episode, and then in the third episode, we covered uh, Forbert's. So in today's episode, we're going to talk about stick. Um, quite honestly, if I could cover stick and corner into the uh, the same video, but I don't want it to be a super long video, so I will probably cover that one here in a future video. As you can see, I'm not really going in any particular order here. I'm going to cover all topics, so do plan on switching back and forth between pass and run. So you guys that are that are faithful with the run, don't worry, I, I got it coming. Uh, it's just no particular order. I'm kind of just switching in and out here, trying to cover all aspects. But as you can see, we got a long way to go with these episodes here. Hopefully try and keep them into relatively short videos. I know I haven't done that in the last few. So uh, I'm trying to keep these relatively trimmed down here. So like I said, today we are going to cover stick in this video and all the aspects that I use in my in my offense, how I use stick and how I utilize it in different formations. <laughs> Um, I do have linked down in the description the uh, the previous three episodes, which would be uh, episode one again, uh, philosophy and personnel, and then episode two would be the formations, and then episode three was uh, four verticals or or six. So in this episode again, like I said, episode four we'll be covering stick, or some people would like to call it why stick. Um, so stay tuned and uh, I'll see you in the video. All right, here is. The rules that I typically try and follow in my concepts that I teach. Uh, so this is the concept rules. Rules can be used for each quick game passing concept. Example, stick, corner, fade out, stick, wheel. I, do, I don't include these rules in the four verticals, the shallow cross, the mesh, wide cross. These are more typical drop back concepts that utilize both sides of the formation to create their, their route combinations. So in other words, um, stick, corner, those, for example, the concept is ran to uh, one side of the formation while the other side does something different. Where a shallow cross, uh, you have um, routes coming from both sides of the formations that are present in the, uh, the route combination and the actual um, accuracy, I guess you would say, or of the, um, of the, of the concept itself. So, so I just basically just teach these in the, uh, in the quick game concepts. So the backside of our concepts, uh, remains the same always. There'll be double slants. Uh, QB has the freedom to throw the backside immediately if he sees an open receiver pre-snap. Uh, QB's pre-snap diagnosis is extremely important. It's basically, in my opinion, about 80% of the full picture of the defense will be given pre-snap. So basically 80% of the uh, what the defense is going to do on that particular snap will be shown pre-snap. Uh, QB needs to ask himself some general questions. Do I have an open receiver right now? Is the defense blitzing? And if so, can I replace the blitz with a throw? So is the backside open? So those are those are questions that I got from uh, Coach Patrick Taylor that uh, that I use in my concepts as well. So the receiver has to ask mentally ask himself these questions um, every snap, and it's, it's it's a quick process. It's not like he's sitting back there for 20, 30 seconds, kind of divulging uh, what the answer to these questions are. He should be able to uh, process it pretty quickly just by looking at the defense pre-snap and based on where we are going with the ball where we're trying to go with the ball. He can decipher between which, which question is the best, uh, has the best answer and the best solution. So those are our basic concept rules. These are the rules that I teach my quarterback and my receivers uh, when, I'm, when I'm installing stick or the Y stick concept. Now we don't call Y stick in my offense because uh, both my slot receivers are either H or Z, but it's the same idea, same thought process. Uh, the concept for me is not re relegated to uh, to only one side of the formation. Whichever side is the backside, the receivers will run double slants aiming for the gaps in the defenders. So slot typically slot receivers typically have a one-step slant and the outside receivers typically have a three-step slant. And they have to recognize where the gaps where they can hit that slant into in the space to try and get themselves open. Uh, on the concept side, outside receivers run a mandatory outside release vertical, restacking the defender, basically just like four words. The slot receiver runs the stick route, which is aiming for the inside shoulder of the nearest defender and settling in the space between the nearest defender and the closest middle linebacker. Um, basically, just really a uh, drill that we talk about, an everyday drill that we're going to talk about later on is uh, settle a noose. This teaches the receivers to settle up in the space in between the defenders and put their hands up and show them, give a big target. That's essentially what the stick route is. The running back runs 
the swing to the flats of the concept side. So I'm a big fan of the swing. I just feel like it gives the, the running back more space and with more space, uh, he has an opportunity to get the ball in his hands with, with room to move and potentially make a big play. Uh, quarterback, quarterback scans both sides of the defense. If there is an open receiver backside on the slant, QB has the freedom post snap to throw that slant. If the backside is not open, then pre-snap QB peaks the vertical, which again, he's peaking the vertical pre-snap. It's not part of his concept read when he gets the ball post snap. If the quarterback is pressed and the matchup is good, the quarterback has the freedom to throw the vertical post snap. If the quarterback then turn, if not, the quarterback then turns his attention to the overhang defender concept side. And the goal is to put that defender in conflict. So again, we want to pick on that one outside linebacker or overhang defender that's over matched up over the slot. We want to put him into, in, into conflict and make him choose wrong every single time. Uh, by running the stick route in his area, combined with the swing to the flat, it forces him to make a choice in which his choice will always be wrong. If the defender in conflict stays with the stick route, then the QB throws to the swing. If the defender chases the swing, then the quarterback throws the stick route where the overhang defender used to be. Wide receivers need to understand where their open grass and where their open grass is and find it to settle up. Outside wide receivers need to make sure they can get an outside release and then restack their defender to ensure an easier throw for the quarterback. So these are the basic rules that I follow when I install sticks. And I, and I cover all these rules um, while, while I'm installing it. And then and after that, it's just rep, 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 rep to try and uh, get it down uh, as best we can. So here I have our basic two by two set, our ace stick. We, and we call it H stick because we use H and Z as our slot receivers here. So it would either be H or Z stick. I'm, I'm a fan of running, being able to run the concept of both sides. So what I talked about in the rules, again, I'll just talk about the backside first. Our backside is double slants. We got a one step slant. We got a three step slant to the outside. And as far as the concept side, we are looking at a mandatory outside release vertical. Um, they're just trying to get outside and then restack the defender and get deep. And then we have the stick route right here ran by H. Um, ruled again, we told them is to attack that inside shoulder and settle up in that space in between the overhang defender and the nearest inside linebacker in that little space and show hands. And F, our running back, is swinging out into the flats. So just covering the rules just so you can see here, visualize it here. Quarterback is pre-snapping this corner right here. So if this corner is pressed down by any means, and we like this uh, this matchup here with this receiver, we are able to take it, and the quarterback has the freedom to take it, but it's a pre-snap that is not part of the concept, so he's not reading that. Uh, post snap so that is a pre-snap and he determines that before the snap that he's going there uh, but if that corner is off in any way that vertical for us is officially dead so then the quarterback's eyes turn his attention to this overhang defender simple rules here that some other coaches have talked about on youtube that i've adopted as well is the simple rule is if this defender goes out and leaves and chases the swing the running back on the swing then the quarterback's going to throw in. And if this defender stays in to hold on to the stick route right there, then the quarterback's going to throw out. So essentially we are just putting this overhang defender right here in conflict. So forcing him to make a choice and whatever choice he does make, he's going to be wrong. Because the quarterback's going to see his movement and based off his movement is going to throw the opposite way. Now the quarterback does have the options that if he sees almost sort of like four verts, if he sees one of these backside defenders immediately open, for example, this corner is sitting seven, eight yards off, off that slant, and that overhang defender is not sitting in the path or throwing lane pre-snap of that slant, then the quarterback has the option and the freedom to make that throw if he feels he, he feels he's got the option to make that throw and it's an open throw. Same thing with the, uh, the Z here as well. If there's a space there and that receiver is open right away, quarterback can just turn and fire that ball in there. So it doesn't just because we are calling stick does not mean that we have to throw to the concept side with the quarterback does have the option based on what he sees uh, where he can throw the ball. All right. So here's an example of stick out of our three by one formation. This is our early. Now our rules or my rules for stick in a three by one set is the same 
it doesn't matter the formation. It doesn't matter if we're an empty formation and a three by two set, if we're in a bunch set, if we have a sniffer back and it's a three by one, the rules stay the same. And the rules are most inside receiver is going to run the flat route or pretty much takes the uh, place of the running back in a two by two set when the running back is running the swing in the concept. He is now essentially the running back in running that swing. He what we call it a flat route, basically just one step and he is running parallel to uh, the line of scrimmage. And in stick, our middle receiver is running the stick route. We like to have that little cross between the receivers here. Uh, just it creates a little bit added, added confusion. Outside receiver is still running that vertical. Backside receiver, even though it's just a single receiver, is still running that slant. It will be a three-step slant here. And then our rule here is our running back um, is swinging away from the trip side. So we essentially have uh, five players or five receivers out in, in the concept that he, the quarterback, has the option to, to throw to any, any one of them. So rules still apply, you know, whether it's three by one or two by two here. Priesting at that corner again, if we like that matchup, and he's pressed in, and we, we like the matchup with, again with our, with our wide receiver here, for example, we can take that shot. Again, it's not part of the concept as far as reading it. This is a pre-snap look here. Another pre-snap look here too as well is the backside slant. Um, if, it's, if it's there, the quarterback has the option to take, especially if this defender is, say, is moved down, maybe showing blitz or trying to get a beat on that running back. That all of a sudden creates that open space right behind him. Then he has the option to throw it in there right behind him, especially if that linebacker blitzes, which typically a lot of times what we see is we get a three by one. This backside linebacker here will come down on the line of scrimmage and act as another rusher. And so that opens up the space right behind him for us to throw it right behind it. But again, right here, we are trying to put this most inside defender in conflict right here. Not necessarily worry too much about the, the overhead defender right here. Now, the only thing this changes is, for example, and then we'll show you here, just move this, edit this formation. If we get a look like this, where the safeties sit back here and they're covering essentially with our two linebackers, or maybe this might be safety pressed down like this. Right now, what we will look at is we will look at this inside defender. Still trying to put this inside defender in conflict right here. Not necessarily worry too much about this defender right here. So we're going to attack, try and attack the inside shoulder of this inside defender right here and see if he decides to chase out after the swing or stay put in a little zone right here. If he does, then we just hit this swing. Um, now, the way this changes is if this, say this player is here, for example, and now we have the safety over top of – of, uh, of our inside receiver here. Now, the shifts, because this player, this defender right here is not necessarily more in the position to, to make a play. So now it turns to right here, and this this uh, defender over top of our Z is now the defender we're looking at. But we, So we, we are looking at the alignment of the defense here. So if we get this look, we will, we will actually read the overhang defender over top of our middle receiver if we get something like this now if we get something like this where we have three over three like this and the safety is still sitting back here in the middle of the field safety is pretty much not an issue we are going to read this inside defender if he chases off after the flat we can hit the stick in behind it or vice versa if he stays right there in that zone then we can hit that flat defender and then with the running back here on the swing this essentially is the old crap route. You know, nothing's there. I don't like anything I have. I can immediately throw it out the swing because technically this more likely logically is the defender that's going to be most responsible for the running back here. So we will throw it uh, because that'd be a tough for that defender to get out there to that swing. And there's all this grass here that we can take advantage of. Here are some examples of uh, the stick route in different formations that I use in my offense here. As you can see, we got the ace formation right there, which is our two by two. Here's an example on the right of our of our two back set uh, stick, what it would look like. This would be blue, stick left. Example of a couple three by one sets here. 
Uh, the, the, again, the rules for three by one sets still stay the same. The most inside receiver here, whether it's a bunch or whether it's late, like you see over here, the inside receiver has that flat route. The middle receiver, middle slot receiver has that stick route. And then the outside receiver still has his outside release vertical. And again, same rule applies in a three by one set for us. The running back then swings opposite the trip side. And it's still the same over here as well. You know, late formation, the same rules do apply. Here is an example of our stick out of our empty set right there on the left. Again, inside receiver, whether it's Z, whether it's F, doesn't matter. Most inside receiver has that flat route. That rule remains the same no matter which receiver is there. Um, and then that middle receiver runs the stick route, as you can see, outside receiver, outside release vertical. And then we have the backside there, which is the double slants. On the right side here, we have our open formation, which we put Z in as a sniffer back or an, an H back, so to speak. We can run the stick to either side here. And so here's an example of it running it to the slot side, which is basically just regular stick out of like almost like a two by two set with both receivers flanked out. Here's an example of it to the other option or the other side here as well. So you see now Z as a sniffer back runs that stick route. He's still going to attack the inside shoulder of that outs or that overhang defender and try and settle up in that, in that gap right there in between the linebackers. And then on the right there, you see uh, our open strong, which is basically putting three receivers to one side and the rule still applies there. Z would run the flat route while H runs the stick route and F then swings to the opposite side of the trips there. So the rules still apply. This is just a different look as a three by one set right here. Thank you guys for uh, watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helped. Um, like I said in the, in the beginning of the video, um, the other episodes are linked down in the description. So if you haven't checked those out, make sure you check those out. If you like this content, please drop this video, give it a like, and uh, also subscribe for the more future content. Until then, I'll see you in the next video.